My goodness, I think I've found it. I think I have found my game of 2023 so far. My goodness, I cannot wait to tell you guys about Birthright Alliance of Lords. Now that's not to say that I don't have some small criticisms, but what we'll do is we'll take a look at this game, including how to play it, as well as my thoughts, and whether or not you should pick up a copy for yourself. Hey everyone, my name's the Ragamuffin Man, and in today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at Birthright Alliance of Lords. We're gonna be taking a really high level overview as to how to play the game, as well as my thoughts on whether or not I think that this game is worth your time. Spoilers, it is. It's so good. So Birthright Alliance of Lords was a game that I came across and fell in love instantly with the art. I contacted the developers who were nice enough to send me two starter decks as well as a playmat with amazing artwork. Mm, that is going to be a theme in this video. So before we get into the review, just so that you can understand what I'm talking about, let's take a high level overview of the game itself. So in Birthright Alliance of Lords, you will be controlling Controlling a Lord with a bunch of abilities. You will also have a stack of Aegis cards which act as your health. You will then also have your deck and your discard pile. That's it. Within your deck, there are three types of cards. There are minions, which you will play onto the field, allowing you to attack your opponents. You can only normal summon once per turn. However, you can fulfill other requirements to grant you some extra special summons. The second type of cards are charm cards, which are single use cards that provide a single effect to the board. And the third type of cards are augment cards. There are two subtypes. There are minion augments, which are attached to your minions like equipments to give them new effects or to give them buffs and there are field augments. Essentially, you play them and they sit on the field and they have a constant effect while they're there. The cards themselves have different abilities based on your Ikor value. Your Ikor ticks up once per turn and depending on the amount of Ikor you have available, this will unlock new abilities on card. So other than the artwork, let's move on to talking about the lore of this game. I studied game design at university and I love getting involved in a game from a design perspective. I love seeing when the design of a game fits the actual lore itself. Itself, and in this game it really does tie in so well. So with all of these grand massive plans and stories and worlds that are created by trading card games, what is the lore behind these two starter decks? Birthright is essentially a, a, a trait that is given to certain people and a birthright will awaken within them and allow them to have magical powers. Whilst wandering in the forest, Eleanor, a simple peasant girl, had a birthright awaken within her and inadvertently burned down the forest and from the ashes rose bears and dinosaurs and other phoenix-like creatures and she is trying her best to control this inferno that she has started. Also, a birthright had awakened within a deer who lived in the forest, and so Chrysella was born. Her goal is to herd together all of the deer and defeat the person who is trying to destroy their home. It's such a small local story that it makes it so easy to relate to what's happening. When you're playing as Chrysella against Eleanor, you really do feel as though you are herding all of your deer together in order to, you know, try and save your home. Whenever you are playing as Eleanor, you feel like you're commanding massive creatures and trying to wield these, like, unwieldy, almost, like, massive life forms to try and defeat your opponent. It's such a small story. It's such a local story. It's such a breath of fresh air. It just feels really, really nice to play a game with a lower, like... It along those lines. So another part of the design that I find really elegant is that the entire game can be tracked using only two spin down D20s, just one per player. The only thing that really needs tracked is your Ikor. You start with zero and then every turn you go up by one. Now you don't spend your Ikor, it's not like mana in Hearthstone, but whenever you get an Ikor, essentially it's, we thought of it as leveling up, you kind of gain a level, and then the abilities on your cards that I talked about earlier will become unlocked. Because of the very small and concentrated amount of card types and the ability to track the game using only two D20s, it means that the board itself is extremely clean. At the bottom left, you have your Lords and your Aegis cards. At the right, you have your deck and your discard pile, leaving the majority of a normal sized, like standard playmat available for you to just put cards down, rearrange in a way that feels comfortable. New players don't feel overwhelmed by having cards everywhere. It's a such a nice little 
kind of really neat and tidy game and it means that you never feel like it's getting out of control it's it's so good at making new players feel as though they're in control of what they're doing as far as the game itself the games are well paced it never feels as though winning is out of reach there were no massive swings in health there were no uh times whenever i felt like i was just getting you know destroyed by my opponent and you know i was throwing my hands up in the air just waiting for the next game it felt like i always had something to do and i always had a plan to kind of get out of every situation i felt i found myself in so next Next, let me move on to the two points that I feel really set this game apart from other games. The first one is the Ikar system. The idea of just leveling up once per turn, I know that you're gaining Ikar, but we just kind of colloquially refer to it as leveling up because that sort of made sense. It has an effect outside of just making your card stronger in the late game. It also means that in the early game, you will start to manage your hand in such a way that you'll keep cards until you have the Ikar available to, you know, activate their you know, extra effects. The idea of managing your cards based on early game and late game because they have different effects, I just, that's not something that I've ever really played too much before. And it did mean that hand management became time-based as well as ability-based or combo-based. It just added a brand new dimension to the game that was lots of fun. It never got too complicated. You were always excited to get to that stage. You were like, oh, I've got seven Ikor, and once I get nine, then I get like this new effect. Once I get that effect, then I can destroy the monster. Like you were so excited about getting more Ikor. It meant that every turn was opening up new opportunities for you to kind of, you know, just unlock new play lines. It was so much fun. So whenever you attack your opponent's Aegis deck, which starts with seven that means that they start with seven health you're attacking the top card of that deck when you declare that attack you rest your minion essentially you just tap your minion the unique part of this game comes in that minions can only target other minions who are in the rested state. If your minion is upright, it cannot be the target of an attack by another minion. This adds a brand new dimension to the game where you can build up your side of the board if you want, but you're not doing any attacks. And if you do attack, then you're leaving your side of the board open to a retaliation by your opponent. If your minions are rested, then your opponent can come in and start attacking those rested minions in order to, you know, whittle down your side of the board. It means that you have this kind of safety net that build up like lines of play, but you also put those lines of play at risk whenever you effectively go ahead with your plan. It sounds like a really simple change, but whenever you're playing the game, you really do think twice about just kind of going out for an attack and being like, oh, I'll attack because they're just sitting there. You do think twice about it because you don't want to rest a minion because you might be waiting for like its later Ikor ability to kick in. It's such a fun way of managing your board. Like your hand and your board are managed in two completely different ways than you would normally think they would be in like minion based combat. So if you are like me and you are completely sold on this game and love it to death, then you'll probably want to pick up some starter decks. And there and I think is the only place where the game kind of falls short. The starter decks can only be bought in the Individually. Now, at the moment, there are only two of them. There's the Cressella starter deck and there's the Eleanor starter deck. However, you can only buy them individually and they are $20 each. Now, at the moment, I don't think they ship to the EU. Uh, I got mine kind of specially sent to me uh, for this video. However, if you are in a region that supports it, you can only buy them individually. This might not be a massive deal for some people, but I just think that a nice little double box with two D20s in there, like two little spin down D20s. So, like, that would be everything you need to play the game. That would be so good. Even if it was like, you know, oh, $35 and you get like this little starter set where you get two decks and two spin down dices and, you know, a little printed rule sheet. And I just think that that would be a fantastic little product to get people into the game. It's like one and done. You buy it, bring it to your next like a card game, board game night and just have loads of fun. So should you pick up this game and give it a go? Yes unequivocally yes if you like trading card games you should play this game if you like you know like lore based games with lots of really neat design then i would pick up this game if you are new to trading card games and you're looking for something simple to play or you're looking to introduce someone to trading card games you should pick up this game personally i think that everyone needs to at least give this a go because it is almost a breath of fresh air it takes existing mechanics to make the game feel familiar and it gives its own kind of spin on them and makes them feel fresh again 
The lore is great. The artwork is great. The presentation is great. This is so far my game of 2023. I absolutely love it. I can't wait till the first expansion launches so I can get my hands on it. I want to open packs. I want to like make videos on it. I just, I love this game so much. I cannot wait to explore it more. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you want to know more about Birthright Alliance of Lords, I'll leave some links down in the description below and you can go ahead and take a read for yourself and hopefully pick up some decks and have some fun with this game. Oh my God, it's so much fun. Anyways, thanks for watching this video and I'll see you guys next time.